This is Bumper to Bumper TV. If you see one rolling down the street, don't be shy. Take a good second look, because soon they will be as rare as a built-in tape player. The Pontiac brand, once a staple of General Motors, is fading away into automotive history. Why? It's all about saving money and saving General Motors, which used to be the largest auto company on the planet. What it's going to enable us to do as a company is to dedicate our product development, engineering, and advertising resources on four core brands and make them very healthy and strong for the future. For the record, Pontiac started as a carriage maker forced into building automobiles just to stay in business. It evolved into a car aimed at upscale buyers who wanted more than a Chevrolet but something less than a Cadillac. Over the years, it was firmly planted in that sweet spot. By the late 1960s, Pontiac became a performance brand with the original GTO and Firebird, passenger cars that were heavily influenced by the company's participation in racing. However, somewhere along the line, Pontiac lost its identity and edge, turning out less than memorable versions of whatever GM decided to sell to American buyers. The low point was probably the 2000 introduction of the Aztec. Branded as a sport recreation vehicle built on a minivan chassis, the Aztec was criticized for its looks, which included more body cladding than a Gladiator movie. In an attempt to revive the brand, GM even partnered with rival Toyota to build the Pontiac Vibe, a rebadged version of the Matrix. Despite that, loyalists like these people at the annual F-Body gathering continued to love, pamper, and modify their Pontiacs. It has a 5.3 liter stage two and a half uh, heads on it from Texas Speed. Has the uh, Texas Speed uh, Torque version three cam in it, which is a 231, 234 cam with uh, I think a 644 intake with the uh, 598 exhaust on it. Somehow that spirit still survived in Pontiac, and the company tentatively edged back toward performance cars. One effort was the Solstice Roadster and Coupe, a four-cylinder, two-seater that never quite caught on. For true believers, the company offered a revived GTO created by Holden, the Australian division of General Motors. That group also created the G5 subcompact, the G6 midsize, and they also came up with the G8, a rear-wheel drive vehicle with a V8 engine. A full-size sedan, the G8 once again delivered on the brand's legacy of performance from a stoplight, while simultaneously turning in highway driving efficiency of 27 miles to the gallon. But the help from down under proved to be too little, too late, to save the iconic brand. This is Greg Morrison.